Mkaibo was trending all over the weekend after a Bulgarian makeup artist posted some very um, disturbing behind the scenes, very questionable. Um, and uh, she did this um, at a talent show. You have to take a look at this. I mean, what in the not so non is that? Oh, mm? man. So this was seemingly shot after the singer took to stage as non You have to take a look at this. <laughs> Whoosh, whoosh. 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 And I then she goes, she goes, yeah. <laughs> okay, Serafina, <laughs> not. Jeez. What was that? A mess. A mess. And it's so sad whenever we talk about these topics, we actually don't dive into them so people actually get what is actually wrong with this. 100%. And you, like, you, I saw, there was a tweet that I saw where Ulindo Gutle, Usne, Usne, Uste, saying, Saying it's okay to wear blackface, to perform, like saying it's okay to use the N-word on the song. Right. I see most South Africans don't know what blackface is mm -hmm. and what it's used for. That's why we laughed along with Leon Schuster for so long before seeing the problem with his movies. And actually, that's the problem. People actually still don't get what's wrong with blackface. They don't get the, the historical context of it. And that's why we have this problem. Mm. And it's such a powerful history mm. when you talk about blackface. And, and it's also about the frame of reference because yeah. if you are watching all these videos, including that of Leon Schuster, all the mm. skits that he did in the name of comedy, mm. making fun of many different people, you know, dressed up as a black person, mm. then you probably interpret everything that mm. he's doing as problematic. Right. But not everybody understands and not everybody uses the frame of reference. Mm. So people will watch Leon Schuster and think, oh, this is funny. Mm. Black people will think it's amazing. A lot of black people still do think that Leon Schuster's material is amazing. Mm. And you know, then you gotta ask yourself the question, do we really understand the problematic nature of things like this? Mm. But you can't, have, you can't have people do this where there's internet, there's information. You can find this information everywhere and that's why you'll know it's problematic. Mm. So I know that obviously, you know, we're in a country in this particular case where mm. there's very few black people, but if you could find Dom Kleber on the internet, then you can find the information that will tell you that this is wrong. And also, please find this makeup artist. I mean, what is it? Is it like the ghost of Nom Kebo? Is it like the ghost of Nom Kebo? Goodness. Sure. Oh. Well, uh, hashtag ended up on the timeline as well this past weekend after he posed this question about the processions at King Goodwill Zuelitini's state memorial. <coughs> So, um, of course, the tweet says, would it have been wrong if CR had asked Jay-Z to do the eulogy? Mm -hmm. Hashtag asking for a friend. Sure. Hashtag Zuelitini. So this tweet led to a lot of mixed reactions with people trying mm -hmm. to kind of work out and decipher exactly what he meant. In fact, uh, this comment on Twitter by Zimkita asked him this. So what do you see right about CR asking Jay-Z to do it? Or was there anything wrong with the president doing it? I just want to hear the logic behind the question. Mm. To which, of course, Kaya clarified with this follow-up tweet. He says, CR did well. There's no question. My interrogation was leaned towards proximity of Jay-Z to the king. Mm. Say I was CR and I thought, Yazi, I think Jay-Z knew this man way more than me. Can I not ask him to do it? Same can be said about Data's funeral. Um, I think TM would have killed it. Shoo. Okay, so... So many people on the timeline obviously came hard for Kaya, accusing him of tribalism and, black, and lacking a fundamental understanding of how the state works, particularly where state funerals for significant public figures are concerned. Mm -hmm. So what did you guys make of Kaya's tweet? I, I think that he backpedaled, and he shouldn't have, because I know exactly what he wanted to say, okay. and there was nothing wrong with what he said. Even people like Uli Netanduli actually had the same sentiment, said this obituary should have been read in Zulu, the end. Today isn't the day for accommodation. We've been interpreting and correcting all week. And the Nango U's Piti Piti evaluator, Nae Uzewati, Uti, 
Today's event was not how Amazulu do things. It was supposed to be a day of honoring the king. Even the king's news was not given a slot. Mm. The whole memorial service was European. It was awful. The next king must fix this mess. And that's, mm. I, I believe in that. I was just like, can we just have the eulogy and the obituary just read in Zulu? Because it was just missing. Mm. There was a thing that was missing. So, so, so correct me if I'm wrong, and, and, and maybe I'm also misunderstanding mm. how things work, right? Mm. What I've been seeing is, is a lot of education based mm. on what happens once a king has, has passed mm. on. There are certain ceremonies and steps that we are not allowed to have access mm. to as the public. So it, with that said, the week leading up to the memorial, was that not all respected and done as it should be then? And then in this moment where we're including now SA because mm. we've all lost someone, not just you guys, mm. right? We're including, we're trying to understand, we have other people in different provinces trying to understand what's mm -hmm. happening is that not the point of this state funeral being inclusive of south africa with all mm -hmm. its languages and all the people who want to mourn with you after you guys have finished your moment or had your time to mourn the correct way mm. Mm -hmm. because the, the other thing obviously is the relationship between the government and uh, the monarch in this particular case and we know that that relationship is, is a constitutional relationship, it's at a social, cultural, mm. it, it's at many different levels. Mm. So I think the, the presence of the president mm. there was an important thing. Mm. I can sit here and say, I didn't see anything wrong with him reading the eulogy. Mm. Right. Um, somebody sitting in Guruman or Rustenburg would probably have a, a, you know, an understanding of, of everything that was said there and you know, how the president articulated the life and times of, of, of the king. Mm. And I think that relationship I is important because the two, have to kind of work together yeah. through time. Mo, we, we're asking for, we, we get that you guys wanted a compromise and you wanted us to, be, to feel included, but this was a Zulu king and all we wanted was just Uti, Sitole, that eulogy. The president could have been there and gave us presidential speech we're not saying Guti, he mustn't be there but we just there were two important items that were there that we just wanted to hear them being presented in our language at the death of our of our king and there's nothing tribal about that because every time we ask something it then be, it becomes something about being tribalistic no we were just asking in that moment as zulu people can we just have that isiki Sure. And I don't I like wish this. We had more time. Yeah, I mean, I don't even like this thing where some people are saying, "Yeah, well, you know, Jacob Zuma, former president, maybe he should have done it." I mean, mm -hmm. come on, what does that say about our, our current sitting president? What are you trying to say? No, huh? we, 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 listen, I'm, I'm not about the politics of that. I'm not about the politics of that. But what I'm saying is that we just ask for two. Two items, yeah. two items. And the thing is, we do have space, by the way, in black families for people <laughs> that want to speak English. Uh, the reading of the tombstone, <laughs> the reading of the present. Not the emperor. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's all of three lines, there. that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. Mm. So, I mean, of course, we don't ask you at home what you think about um, everything that transpired, including, of course, the tweet from Ukayam Tetwa. And the comments have come in. Of course. So a tweet from Nazim Khrutbuim says, good question indeed, but if he was chosen, to deliver the eulogy, what's the point of arguing about it? And we still have a long way to beat tribalism and racism in this country. Mm. Mm. Here's another one. Stephen Guni says, personally, it was reckless for Kaya to make such a controversial, tribalistic insinuation pertaining to the eulogy of the president. I thought he was a man of God. Wow. We should always mm. try to unite than divide. Silence is sometimes golden. I liked him when he was still an idol, unless he's now a tri or a traditionalist. Yo, wow, Some strong views yeah. there. Um, nice. And of course, uh, you know, it just goes to show that it's it's a matter where a lot of people are divided on. Yeah, it's a personal matter. It's about culture. It's about identity. It's about all the all of these things. And how do we find the balance within yeah. all of? Yeah, and them? also more just before we go to a net break, it is not tribalistic to ask for something to be done in an official language of this country of this country this is south africa our land we've got 11 official languages i like that